Hey there, it's Liz, and thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Hungarian Living Podcast. This week, we are talking about our new Hungarian history and culture course. The details are coming up. Hi, welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sabo Voss. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, and language, and share stories from our listeners. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll encourage you to dig deeper to learn about your Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll have thought-provoking conversations and share resources. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. Welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Liz Sabovas, and today I am visiting with Gergely, our Hungarian language teaching partner. Gergely lives in Hungary, and he and I met online over a year ago. Welcome, Gergely. Thank you. I am glad to be here. Before we get started, I want to explain a little of our history together. Last year in May 2020, I was so excited to have just discovered some online Hungarian language group lessons. I was several sessions in and our instructor needed to take a break from teaching due to different job responsibilities, but she needed a replacement instructor. I had remembered that a few months earlier, someone had contacted me and offered Hungarian language instruction. So I dug through my emails and found the email that Gerge had sent me and shared it with the instructor. She contacted him and he was hired. And then Gerge was my instructor. Class was fun and I enjoyed Gerge and my classmates a lot, but I hated the time that the class was offered. My only choice was Sunday afternoons, but it got me thinking. We know all kinds of people who are looking for Hungarian language instruction. And if Gergely was available during the day and during the week, it would be a great opportunity to offer lessons then. So since then, Gergely and I have been working together to provide Hungarian language lessons, and the concept has grown quite a bit. And Gergely has put together a course on Hungarian history and culture. We will have two sessions of that offered this fall. So Gergely, with that introduction, can you... Tell us a little bit about where you were born and where you live and and all that good stuff. I was born in Hungary, in Miskolc, and uh, now I live in in Hungary, in Miskolc as well, in the same city. Uh, Miskolc is the third biggest city in Hungary after Budapest and Debrecen. And how long have you been teaching Hungarian to adult learners? Uh Okay. Uh, Let me separate. Let me separate it. I started Hungarian in 2004, uh, and I taught um, secondary school students. I started to teach adults Hungarian uh, in 2009. Um, then two uh, young people from Romania asked me to teach them to Hungarian. They, they were the first in uh, in that time, and uh, from that, I'm teaching Hungarian as a foreign language for foreigners. Okay, okay. So you were teaching in a secondary school, teaching Hungarian, but then teaching Hungarian as a second language started, well, that was almost well, seven years ago, right? Is that seven years? Seven, seven. Uh, 12, 12. I started 12 years ago. 2004? 2009. Oh, 2009. Okay, so in 2009... Uh, the Hungary, uh, Good. I, I, I have started in a secondary school. I have started 2004. Uh, Hungarian is a foreign language for adults. Uh, 2009. Okay, okay. 2009, so that's, that's been a good, a good amount of time. So you've seen lots of adults and had fun with them. Yeah, yes. <laughs> what do you enjoy about teaching adults Hungarian? I like to teach adults. Because those who apply for the course really want to learn Hungarian. Adults with uh, shining eyes are once again part of the fact that in the mass of the of often not easily understood grammatical structures required step by step, they too can form Hungarian sentences. The, uh, that joy is my success, and it feels really good. Well. I have to say that as having been a student of yours, I love your enthusiasm, your patience, but I also think you have a great sense of humor 
And I think you really take time to listen to what the issue, you know, where the challenge is and explain it. And if we don't understand it, you'll explain it again in another way. So uh, I really, I appreciate all that. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about how this Hungarian history and culture class came about. In one of the language, our language uh, classes, where we got to page uh, 96 of the textbook, I told about where this number comes back in Hungarian history. After class, one of my students asked me if I would say more about Hungarian history because she is very interested in it. They came with another uh, disciple to the conversations held every two weeks at a time. They, their interest and, and their persistence inspired me to think about it further. And that's why now we can sit here and we can talk about history cars. Yes. Well, awesome. Well, there is so much to learn about history in general, but particularly about Hungarian history. You know, the time frame for U.S. history is fairly short comparatively. And so I really have to pay attention when we talk about Hungarian history because it's just it's so many hundreds of years. It's it's crazy. So I'm always learning something new and, and I'm also always forgetting something that happened that I thought I knew and trying to put it in the right category. So how have you kind of divided up the class topic? It is a very good question. I try to choose topics from Hungarian history that are familiar to everyone. Maybe someone just heard the name somewhere or a street name familiar, for example, Rakotsi, Kossuth, Széchenyi, etc. However, we are now building the story around the name as well. So the, the main parts of the Hungarian history, what I chose for these classes, for this course. Okay, okay. And let's talk a little bit about your experience in teaching history. So explain a little bit about the subjects that you taught in the secondary school in Mishkots. Yep, okay. In the secondary school, in the secondary school, I taught literature and Hungarian grammar for Hungarian, Hungarian students. and. Uh, when we started the new ages, I had to talk about uh, the history, not only the Hungarian history, but international history as well. And uh, that's why I have, uh, I have knowledge about, uh, about history. And of course, I like Hungarian history and I was uh, many places in the Carpathian Basin, the old, uh, old Hungary, territory of the old Hungary. And uh, this is the reason why I can uh, talk nowadays about history. Okay. I'm super excited about this class. And we already have quite a few people that have registered, but we do have a few, uh, just a few spots left. And it's important to mention that, so it's 10 weeks long and it'll be 30 minutes each week that you, that there's class that you'll present. And you might have time for a couple questions or people could email you questions during the week that you maybe can answer. So just like we have students from outside the U.S. taking Hungarian language lessons, students from outside the U.S. can also take this Hungarian history and culture course as long as it does okay with their time zone. So we, you know, we do have some people from far eastern Canada that are taking language lessons, people, somebody who's from Ireland in one of your classes. So as long as it works out, people from anywhere really can take the class, but they need to make sure that they contact us. For the information and the class sizes are limited, but we hope to offer more of this class in the future as well. So if you don't get to it this semester, then or it doesn't work in your schedule for the semester, stay tuned for next semester where we will surely do more of this kind of class. Okay, so Gergay, what are some of the topics that will be taught in this class? The Hungarian history is so long. So long is starting from. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Starting from the Irilic Mountains, uh, from <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, the written history is uh, one thousand year, a little bit more than one thousand year, and I would like to talk about the main part of this history. Uh, we will talk about Arpad and Matyash, King Matthias. Uh, Matthew and 
Rakuzi, who he, he was the he was the uh, freedom fighter in the 18th century, and then Kossuth Lajos, Széchenyi István. Very important, the 20th century about uh, the fir- first, uh, the Second World War, and what happened in 1956, and uh, and uh, the living, the life in the in the Qadar era is also important. I would like to to give you important things, important uh, uh, facts, what happened, and not uh, deep historical things, because uh, that would be, can be, not would be, it can, can be so boring. I don't want it. I don't want to bore you. Okay. To bore you. So it'll be a nice survey of a pretty good chunk of time, but the important personalities, the history that's that happened during that time. Yes. And... Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And the classes are there's 10 weeks to the class. Yes. Yes. So 30 minutes is uh, not too not too much. Uh, but I will try to talk about everything what I can. It, this there will be uh, architecture and uh, music, literature as well if it is possible and and music. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well good. See. So it'll there'll be lots of touching on a lot of different things. So it's not just <laughs> history facts, but it's it, but it's all kinds of information surrounding the different times in history and what was happening during those times. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. think it's going to be fascinating. I can't wait for it. History, history is reason for talking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good point. Good point. All right. Well, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. It's we've we've talked so many hours through the through this last year that it's just fun to visit with you again in a different way. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much, Liz. Bye. And 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 thank you for listening to this episode of the Hungarian Living Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this conversation with Gergely, our teaching partner. We will include links to the show notes for more details on the Hungarian history and culture course that we talked about. And those details can be found also at HungarianLiving.com. For more fun conversations about all kinds of things that have to do with Hungarian heritage and culture, be sure to tune into our next episode of the Hungarian Living podcast. And if you have an idea for a topic to be discussed on this podcast, send an email to podcast at HungarianLiving.com. See you next time. Hungarian Living is a division of Mudyar Marketing, the Hungarian store, where you can find meaningful gifts with Hungarian style. Check us out at mudyarmarketing.com. And special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Hungarian Living, please subscribe and share this podcast with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.